6.3 Explore Graphs of Primary Trigonometric Ratios I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we will discuss how to sketch y equals to sin x our parent trigonometric function. Now we need two things to really sketch this function. One is our special triangles. So I'll make use of special triangles. These are the two triangles which have 45 degrees angle and uh, 30, 60, 90. In radians, we'll be talking from now onwards. In radians, these angles will be pi by 4, right? So 45 is pi by 4 in radius. That is 90 degrees. This is also pi by 4. And 30, 60, 90 is pi by 3 is 60 degrees. Pi by 6 is 30 degrees pi is 180 right so when you divide 180 by 4 you get 45 180 divided by 3 is 60 180 divided by 6 is 30 it's kind of important to understand this relation pi is 180 degrees when we say pi and we don't write any units it means radians so i don't have to write radians okay so that is understood now here this is these two angles are same that means if we take these sides as 1 and 1, then the hypotenuse should be square root 2. 1 square plus 1 square square root. Now, this we get a section from equilateral triangle, where all angles are pi by 3. If we assume side to be 2, half of 2 will be 1, and this side will be 2 square minus 1 square square root. So that gives us square root 3. So that is how we get the basic values for the triangle. Okay. So what is this concept? The second is, which I prefer to show you here, we'll sketch sine wave here, but we'll write, draw a small version of sine wave here also. We have been dealing with sine wave uh, for quite some time now, so I think we understand it. So this is how the sine wave is, right? This is how the sine wave is. What we expect here is a maximum value of plus 1, minimum value of minus 1, and uh, this time period of 2 pi, right? So we have 0 at pi, maximum value at pi by 2, minimum at 3 pi by 2, correct? So that is our basic sine function. All these values will help us to fill up everything out here, okay? So let's begin by placing or completing the table. First one is actually I should have started with 0 sine theta when it is 0 is what that should have been the first value which I kind of missed it let me write 0 here so if theta is 0 we know sine is 0 so sine is 0 to start with okay pi by 6 if I need sine pi by 6 I can always use my calculator and figure it out but we don't have to do it since we have our special triangles sine pi by 6 is look at the opposite side and the hypotenuse 1 over 2 right so we get it from this 1 over 2 pi by 4 1 over square root 2 okay so opposite side 1 over square root 2 pi over 3 so we are looking for this opposite is square root 3 over 2 pi over 2 whenever it comes to 0 pi over 2 and pi we'll look into this because we're looking for some maximums or zeros so pi over 2 we have a maximum value of 1 right so if i have a straight line i can't make a triangle that is why i have this small graph here okay 2 pi by 3 now when we say 2 pi by 3 so what has really happened now is that till pi by 2 we are in quadrant 1 now the values start decreasing do you understand so when you are in quadrant 2 so let me explain this concept because we are going to use this concept a lot in coming videos so what has happened here is we are moving on a cartesian plane and up to this point up to this point let us say this is the point right so up to this point till pi by 2 we have moved to this side is it okay and now we are actually getting into the second quadrant second quadrant right so that is up to pi so this is our second quadrant 
it is quadrant 2 for us now is it okay in quadrant 2 if we do the cast rule which is C A S T I'm trying to bring all the things which you learn together sine is still positive right so sine is going to be positive when we say 2 pi by 3 then basically let me just try to sketch this this is 1 pi by 3 this is 2 pi by 3 at that time the acute angle is pi by 3 so we still look into the acute angle triangle and write down the value which is square root 3 over 2 right so let me write these values in red square root 3 over 2 now 3 pi by 4 we are looking into pi by 4 acute angle now right and since we are in quadrant 2 it is positive so 1 over square root 2 5 pi by 6 we are still in quadrant 2 sign is positive acute angle is pi by 6 so from pi by 6 angle if you see opposite is 1 so you get 1 over 2 and for pi this is pi sine is 0 do you see that so the values for sine is 0 half 1 over square root 2 square root 3 over 2 1 square root 3 over 2 you see the symmetry here so sine function has an odd symmetry that is how it is reflected <clears throat> okay we'll just see it further 7 pi by 6 means that you are moved into the third quadrant right so in the third quadrant let me use a different ink so I'll use this blue color in the third quadrant so we are here now so in this quadrant sine is negative sine is positive so we are going to get negative values in this case in fact even in fourth quadrant it is going to be negative so let's write negative here and of course zero will not have negative so we'll change it later okay don't worry about it. 7 pi by 6 means acute angle is pi by 6 so from pi by 6 angle we see sine is 1 over 2 so this is negative but 1 over 2 5 pi by 4 go back to this triangle 1 over square root 2 but negative since we are in quadrant 3 so now we are in quadrant 3 4 pi by 3 pi by 3 is here square root 3 over 2 3 pi by 2 3 pi by 2 is this position 3 pi by 2 perfect now 3 pi by 2 sine is negative 1 right this is kind of a straight line so we can't have a triangle so we look into this diagram minus 1 so 3 pi by 2 is minus 1 now we have moved to quadrant 4 so till this stage we are in quadrant 3 do you understand and now we have moved into quadrant 4 so let me pick up another ink for quadrant 4 so let it be this so we are in quadrant 4 and in quadrant 4 also sine is going to be negative 5 pi by 3 angle pi by 3 sine square root 3 over 2 7 pi by 4 pi by 4 sine opposite over 1 over square root 2 11 pi by 6 pi by 6 1 over 2 do you see how easy it is 2 pi gives us 0 so let me write here a 0 here do you see that so that is how you can fill up your values here now once you have all these values then you can sketch your graph which are I don't have a graph paper here so what I will do here is just sketch it roughly for you which will be the same thing which I have already placed there right so beginning it is going to be a function which is kind of like this this is one wave and of course it's periodic it continues right so it actually continues so we'll draw arrows here now in this sine wave what you have noticed is that we get to the maximum at pi by 2 0 at pi and then minus 1 at 3 pi by 2 and at 2 pi again it is 0 right now these values at 0 it is 0 these values which I have marked on this graph are my key values right so I have some key points and these key points are these coordinates that means at 0 the value is 0 right so let me write like this at pi by 2 
the value is plus 1. At pi, the value is 0. At 3 pi by 2, it is minus 1. And at 2 pi, sine value is 0, right? So these are my key points. So whenever I have to sketch transformed trigonometric functions, especially with sine function, I have to consider these key points, correct? Now you can see, after this circle, which we ended with the green color here, the sine function again repeats. So these values repeat. So we get the same graph over and over again.